morning everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal on an overcast, not too bad actually, Tuesday morning. It's 4 degrees here in southern British Columbia, which I believe is about 39 in American. There are people on my road, I mean really. <laughs> you know how much that frustrates me first thing in the morning. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and they had a green light as well, go figure. <laughs> How are you all doing today? I hope that uh, all is well. I did a marathon bit of editing last night. I came home and I was pretty tired, but I realized that what I'd got was a little bit too much footage to put into one uh, video so I decided to split it up into two. Now what I did was to show you that my life is, <laughs> is quite normal uh, in as much as I had started this as I think I explained in the vlog you know that I'd started this video because I was going to do my get ready with me type video. Um, and the wheels came off, you know. <laughs> and then uh, later on, I was cooking something in the halogen, and I know you guys always like it when I do stuff in the halogen, so uh, I was actually just defrosting with it. And then realized <laughs> that I really didn't do anything else, just defrosted. But maybe that will help somebody, who knows. I I put that I put that footage up because I really want you to understand that I don't care who it is you're watching. And I know that, you know, I appreciate the fact that you watch me and I, I really appreciate the fact that you subscribe and if you haven't, do so. Um, <laughs> you know, and you and that you do all of those things. But what I want you to be really aware of is it doesn't matter who you're watching. Their day does not go as well as you think it does just by watching their videos. And I'm pretty sure that all of you have worked that out. But I think there are times when you need to be reminded of that. And maybe there are times when you need to use that as your role model. In other words, when stuff starts to happen, maybe you can say to yourself, I wonder what a YouTuber would do about this so that they can get themselves together enough to do a vlog. Have you thought about that? Because every day, regardless of what's happening to them, they are still doing a vlog. Or as many times as they do. So, you know, you look at it and you go, the easy thing the really easy thing is to not do a vlog at all. It's actually easier. Because you don't have to get yourself together. You don't have to, um, you know, look like you're together. So just cancel the vlog. So, I mean, I want you to give a whole new sort of aspect to the vloggers. Not me because you all know me, but the other ones that you watch. And I want you to use that as a sort of like, wow, uh, if, if they can do it, so can I. And a lot of them have struggled through some incredibly difficult stuff, as you know, some very challenging personal issues, and still do the work. And I guess that is what I'd like you to think about, is they don't see vlogging um, as a luxury, you know, as something, as a hobby. They see it as their, their life work, in whatever way. Um, it's part of their life. And it was really strange because at least one person has sort of looked at me and said, well, if you're getting tired, why don't you give up the YouTube site? You 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, obviously, somebody who doesn't know me very well, right? <clears throat> I mean, really? If I gave up YouTube, you know I'd be doing something to help others. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, it, it's just like, it's it's um, what I do. I'm not necessarily brilliant at it, but it's what I do. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, and my attitude has always been, except for the days when I've been really ill and unable to vote, but uh, my attitude has always been, I don't care how bad this bit of footage might seem to me, it could help somebody. You know, and, and time and time again, you know, I've done a vlog, a vlog on the way to work and thought, yeah, I really don't think I'm gonna even bother to put that up. And yet, I, I think about it when I get home and go, you know, you never know who that's going to help. And you can be sure I'll put it up. And at least one person will thank me for something in there. Now, here's the way I look at it, rightly or wrongly. If it helps just one person. If one person gets an uh-huh, or if just one person goes, yeah, that's a good point. I need to think about that today. Then it's worth doing, isn't it? I think so. You see, I'm a great believer that you never know when somebody's going to need to hear that word or that, that, that particular saying or that particular piece of logic. You never know. And you could be making the difference for them. So I look at what I do in a day as my jigsaw puzzle that makes up my day. Do, do any of you sort of feel like that as well? Let's call it that, the jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> That's a nice, the puzzle. And the, the reason that I talk about the puzzle is because your life, if you're in balance, is made up with different parts of a jigsaw puzzle that you slot together every day. And some of it is sleeping. It's a very, it doesn't seem to be a very large piece of my puzzle these days. Anyway, but <laughs> some of it's sleeping. <laughs> and then some of it is um, eating. That's a bigger piece. <laughs> yeah. Um, and <laughs> some of it's working. It's a really big piece. Some of it's for me doing Dear Mama Sal, that's a big piece. Some of it's housework, not a very big piece. <laughs> Cooking, not a very big piece. You know, and so you put these little bits together and they all make up my day. And What I'm trying to do now is to add other bits to that jigsaw puzzle on a daily basis. For example, instead of just trying to do pay my bills and things every two weeks, you know, I'm trying to do something towards doing that every night uh, as part of my puzzle of the day. And I actually did that last night. I was quite proud of myself. I sort of opened up all my correspondence and put it all together. Um, uh, ready for me to take another different look at it tonight and pay what needs to be paid and then and so I thought you know if every night I do a little bit towards it that would be a good thing so
when you look at the puzzle that makes up your life, if you've got it pretty much in balance, you won't have time for a lot of the stupid stuff. Like sitting around and feeling sorry for yourself, or... <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 all those sort of things, except you'll have a little piece of your puzzle that that's a good time to do that, which would be when you shower. It's a good time to cry. So when, if you can think of your life as a puzzle, a, a, a picture made up of bit puzzle pieces, and you keep slotting the pieces in, and are you slotting those pieces in every day? I wonder if that makes any sense to anybody. Now, the piece that's been missing off mine, again, is obviously exercise. And it's absolutely insanely stupid. And I don't mind calling myself that. Well, maybe I do. No, I'm not going to call myself insanely stupid. I'm just going to say it's downright lazy. Because I have, next to my bed, I mean, not even in a different room, next to my bed, I have a total gym that I've had for probably 30 years. I probably had one of the original total gyms. Um, in the days when Chuck Norris was actually first famous, I think. Uh, and Christy Brinkley as well. So, I don't even have to go out to exercise. And I don't have to spend money to go exercise. So what I said to Angela was that when she goes to the gym, you know, I would also either walk or go on my total gym. Now, of course, then she went and hurt her foot, which gave me a pass. <laughs> but I don't want a pass. I want to do something. And that's when we get to the next piece of the puzzle. Wanting to do something is like having a wish. What am I waiting for? Is somebody to come and do it for me? I have this discussion every year. Now the good news is I didn't put on nearly as much weight this year, which means if I do something about it, I can lose quite a bit of weight this year. When I say quite a bit of weight, I could lose a couple of pounds without any problem. Having now beaten up on myself, let me now reframe. And you know I'm a great believer in that, right? So I've just beaten up on myself, and if I carry on in that sort of thinking, I'm going to have a miserable day, feeling fat, <laughs> instead of gorgeous which I am. Um, and so, inside and out. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except for a little bit of flab here and there. <clears throat> so to balance that out, to reframe that, what I'm going to say to you is, today is a very big day in my life. Uh, today celebrates three years of not smoking. It was round about exactly this time, three years ago, that I got in the car to go down and see Benji and Judy and young Juliana, she'd just been born, or well, she'd been born a couple of months before, um, and to go visit them in their new house. And it was because of that combination new house, new baby, new life together, that I decided to put on the patch and stop smoking. Now, funnily enough, I wasn't sure whether I was putting on the patch to stop smoking for the weekend or whether it was going to be for life. And first of all, I had high motivation 
because Yvonne, my buddy Yvonne, had given up in sep in the September, so she'd already been smoke free for quite a while. And I had said to her, if you are still not smoking by January, I will quit. That was my challenge to her. <laughs> I've got to be quite honest. <laughs> I've got to be perfectly honest here. I didn't think there was a hope in Hades that she would not be smoking <laughs> come January. So it was a pretty you know, easy bet for me. However, January came and then I had this perfect storm happening, right, with Benji and Judy, Juliana, Newhouse, everything. And so on January the 12th, I put on a patch and drove down to see Benji and Judy. And as some of you who were around at the time know, I had a great weekend. Uh, by the way, I before that I had spent a week doing things like sanitizing my suitcase. That's a nice alliteration, isn't it? Sanitizing my suitcase. I sanitized my suitcase, I literally took the clothes that I was packing and washed them and immediately stuck them in plastic so that the cigarette fumes from around my lifestyle would not permeate into the clothes. I was trying as much as I possibly could to take clean-ish stuff into their house. It, you know, it would never be perfect, but it would definitely be a lot better than it was rather than take smoke filled stuff and I literally just about wiped down everything I took with me which was quite revolting to be quite honest because you don't realize how much cigarette smoke gets into everything but never mind and that's what I did and then I spent the weekend and what stunned me was normally if I had been down to visit I would always come back via the duty-free border so that I could pick up duty-free cigarettes and that particular weekend I didn't I came through the border without cigarettes and then I started the journey of fighting the devil. And that is really has been a part of my life ever since. And I say fighting the devil because although it's less frequent now, it's still a very regular occurrence that the devil inside me Excuse me, I got itchy nose. The devil inside me will say, "Oh, you could really do with a cigarette now." And I've stopped saying. I didn't. I, what I learned to do was not say no. I, I would say, "Yeah, sure. I could really do with a cigarette now, if I hadn't given up smoking, but I have. So let me go and grab." some water or let me go and grab an apple or do whatever you know it's like I learned to finish the sentence whereas for so much of my life the conversation was I could really do with a cigarette now and that's what I do is I'd stop and have a cigarette and that's really what I found out more than anything was I really processed why I was smoking every cigarette. I'd given up so many times. I think just about everything they had ever come up with to stop, help you stop smoking, I had tried. And for me, and I've got to be quite honest, and I know there's a lot of negative press about it right now, but if it hadn't been for the vaping thing, I don't think I would have managed it. There was something about the fact that I could continue the action of smoking by vaping that made it very calming for me to be able to do that. 
and there's those of you who watched me go through it know I, I started vaping in places originally before I gave up completely. Um, I, for about a year before I started, before I quit, for about a year I started vaping. And what I did was I just used a vape pen or whatever you call it, electronic cigarette. Um, in places where I was smoking without really thinking, like I drove the car and smoked. I sat on the computer and smoked. Not, not literally sat on the computer, of course. <laughs> hole in the ground but I needed to go past it and there's a big train and so I took it in baby steps you know as I keep telling you guys that I think sometimes we, we just need to keep taking the baby steps in the right direction until one day the bits of the puzzle will will fit together and that day for me was January the 12th, three years ago, when suddenly all the little steps I'd taken about stopping smoking, all those steps I'd taken in a lifetime suddenly clicked together and I quit. And I can't tell you that I really miss it. It would be a lie. I don't miss the smell of it. I don't miss the cost of it was exorbitant and I certainly don't miss that piece of the puzzle in my life and it was a huge piece of my puzzle so this is dear mama Sal saying take whatever baby steps you need today to take yourself one step closer to your goal even if it doesn't work out because like me one day you're gonna put that piece in and it's gonna stick Good for you. Remember to look after one another, but most of all, remember to look after yourself. This is dear Mama Sal saying bye bye for now.